is uh, what I think about it and what I think about Prop 13 and how it's affected California. And I do think that there is a problem with Prop 13, which is the one that you're highlighting, the difference between residential and commercial and the differential taxation that's occurred over the last 36 years as a result. Um, so personally, I support a change. It doesn't sound like you're proposing a specific change at this time. Uh, uh, then I look at it from the perspective of being on the Atherton Council and the fact that we don't have any commercial property. So this, th this differential is not uh, obviously an issue for us. Uh, but if you look underneath it, since we are funding our state and county and town, um, at least partially, through our property taxes, to the extent that we need to find alternative taxation methods, our residents are burdened by the fact that commercial properties are being subsidized based on the differential change from 1978 to today. And I think that that um, is not a good thing for the state. I think there could have been better planning for the state. I understand what you're saying in terms of the anti-competitiveness of the difference between when a property owner owns their property. All of us as residents certainly feel that with our homes. And, uh, and when a home gets sold next to us and our neighbor has a much higher property tax than we have because of Prop 13, we're glad we don't have that tax. Uh, uh, and since we're not selling things, we don't face the anti-competitive quality of that. Um, I guess I think because of that impact on our residents, where our residents are forced to pay higher sales tax and other taxes to make up for that differential, um, I can see that this would be good for our residents. Councilwoman Lewis. So, um, I own commercial property. I own shopping centers, commercial buildings, rental. My business is commercial property management. Managed. So I probably should recuse myself from this. Personally, I think uh, Proposition 13 uh, tax reform should be made. Um, I. I'm not sure that Atherton should be endorsing it from the DS uh, because we don't have any commercial property. Um, I, I don't know who wrote the uh, resolution, but I think the resolution, um, if, it, if the majority of the council decides to endorse it, needs, needs some wordsmithing and clarification because um, you know, I see where there's uh, inconsistencies in it. So I don't know if this is a standard resolution that you gave them to do. So I, I feel that there's just a, I mean, for instance, the the, the segue, the connection that uh, California State Board of Legalization will generate at least $6 billion in additional revenue for California and shift the tax burden from homeowners, renters, and working families to corporation. That direct correlation, I think, is a bit of a leap. You know, it's too broad. It's and I don't feel comfortable with that. And uh, non-residential commercial uh, property uh, is used in some areas and not used in all of it. So that makes it easy. Anyway, so I am um, personally, I feel that reform is necessary. Um, I'm not sure exactly what this reform looks like that you're proposing, and so it's hard to endorse that. Sure, sure. If I may, I, I passed out a, a sheet to you, uh, and that has more specifics about our, our, our plan for implementation. Well, this was just on my table. Yes. I, I have not read it. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. All right, so um, it's coming to me. Great. Thanks, everybody. It stops there. Yeah. Um, well, I will tell you, personally, yeah, Prop 13 needs to get reformed. But I didn't get elected to address issues outside of Atherton, and often uh, when I walked a very 
large path in this town, one of the questions were, well, are you just going to deal with giving an applicant or what? And uh, obviously, we don't have commercial, so I'm having extreme difficulty even with the reach related to uh, uh, taking a portion of people's money, blah, 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 sales tax, so on and so forth. What does it have to do with Atherton as far as property tax? And the answer really isn't here because we're a residential community. It is commercial reform. We have no commercial to reform. Therefore, you're asking me as a council person to render a decision related to Prop 13, which is reform of commercial, the, the commercial side, which personally I believe. But I didn't get elected by me. I got elected by everybody else that says represent Atherton's needs and interests. So there's my difficulty. Although I would guess that I have a number of residents in the audience that would think the same way if, in fact, I've been elected by the audience um, to render a decision on a Prop 13 reform issue, what would you guys think about it? Sorry. Uh, and I think I see a lot of shaking heads that say, no, you didn't get elected to address commercially. So there's my concern. You elected me as a residential community. I, Mendel Park, they've got commercial. Every city that you said has commercial. And do they need to reform it? Absolutely. Does the town of Atherton need to reform its needs related to Prop 13? We're based on residential property tax, period. Therefore, I'm sitting here at, as a residential, in essence, property tax mayor. But, you know, there's my difficulty. And uh, unless one of my other council members can sway me from that position, uh, my stool kind of says, um, I'm not willing to sign a, a. I'm not willing to sign at this point, just because of that mere fact that we are a residential community and we get used. Sorry, we do get used because of who we are, as a town, and not that the things that come before us we don't believe in. But we're sitting here for another reason, and I think that our name would be used in a manner. Maybe all of us would agree that we want to reform in commercial. But as far as what we're elected to do here today, in my opinion, represents a residential community, in essence, doesn't have the spirit of what you're. Right. Do you have to Please. Just one second. Is this an actionable item? Can um, we take action on this? I mean, it's not. The staff report was written, so we could take. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. okay. Even though it wasn't on the agenda. Well, the public hasn't yes. seen the resolution. I don't yes. think you can take action. Well, so. if you can, so. well, the I just, I, resolution, I, I believe. Like, yeah. I believe the resolution was in the staff information. It was in the packet. It was in the yeah. packet. So, in, in essence, we could render a decision related to that. I, but um, I think that we're at that point where, right. respectively, yeah, no, you can ask each one of these members personally. Yeah. And I'm sure you probably get all four of us personally related to commercial reform through the state interest as our personal opinion. But again, it goes back to my position here as, as, as an Atherton mayor. I apologize, I can't ask for any questions from the floor at this point. Um, but yeah, and it, but if, if I may, um, given Atherton's position within, a, within the county yeah. and within the larger state, yeah. as we are going to be faced with Prop 30 running out in, 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 in 2016. And new attempts at raising the sales and income tax undoubtedly taken to the ballot. I would urge you to act now to ensure that we don't have to make those kinds of decisions. I'm not that I'm going to get into a match with you. <laughs> but. When it comes around in yeah. 2016, come back to us okay. and right. we'll make a decision at that point. But right now, I think that we all personally will say it needs to be addressed. But I think as a diocese and as we were elected by the residents of Atherton, I think we're a little split. But uh, we do no. appreciate your time. Yes, no, th thank you for your time. And just quickly, uh, Councilmember Lewis, we would be happy to... to for you to submit changes if, or if we would work with you to create, again, all that we are asking for is language being left in that commercial property be reassessed regularly. And it seems like that's something you, you could be copacetic with. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay. In the interest of
property tax. Property tax. <laughs> commercial property tax. I think we all do. And yeah. People would want to reform our tax bills too. But let's move okay, on. Okay, thank you very much. So thank you very much for that. <coughs> I apologize to everybody for the lengthiness at this point. Usually we move a little bit quicker. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open an opportunity for public comments. That is for any that would like to speak to any item that is not on the agenda this evening, uh, please step forward and uh, thank you. Good evening, council members. Um, Peter Carpenter, Director of Middle Park Fire Protection District, uh, speaking to you this evening on behalf of the fire district. Uh, we note that the town is considering possible changes with respect to <coughs> traffic on El Camino Real. The fire district is quite concerned about this. As you know, we have five fire stations which serve Atherton. Only one of those is located within the city boundaries. The other four come from outside the, the town of Atherton. Our primary routes of entry into the city are El Camino, the Alameda, and Middlefield going north and south. And those three <clears throat> north-south corridors are essential to our ability to continue to provide timely fire and emergency medical response. Any reduction in traffic capacity on El Camino Real will have an adverse effect not only on El Camino Real, but also on the Alameda and on Middlefield. And unless the four stations outside of Atherton, as well as actually the one station in Atherton, which is located just off of El Camino, have the ability to move north and south, uh, our response times will be seriously degraded. Um, we would therefore ask you, um, to make sure that the district is deeply and closely involved in any decision that you make which would restrict traffic flow on El Camino Rail. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Any other comments from the public or items down the agenda? Thank you. We'll go ahead and close the public comments. We'll move on to item number five, closed session. City Attorney. Well, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, the City Council did meet in closed session this evening, discussed two items. The first was uh, City Council commencement of the review of performance of the city manager. They uh, discussed it and they continued it to a future meeting to look at additional information. Um, the second issue received a report on one case of uh, existing litigation. No action was taken, a report was received. Thank you very much. Obviously, we have no questions for you. We'll move on to item number seven, Community Organization Roundtable Report. Uh, city Manager's Report. Oh, sorry. I just crossed you off already, George. I, I'm moving just flying. <laughs> Catch up. Catch up to me, please. Uh, city Manager's Report, item number six. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the Council, I've got nothing to report other than the report itself. Uh, there was, uh, during some of our pre-meetings, a question about the MCE cost for events at Hobart Palmer Park. And I just wanted to note that the table in the city manager's report needs some updating. We need to begin to separate MCE costs for events at the park to catering by Dana costs for events in the park. And so your next iteration will show that. <coughs> Beautiful, thank you. Any questions from council? No. George, thank you very much. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on to item number seven, which was the one I just said a minute ago. And I'm going to take a guess. Community organization roundtable report, please. Yeah. Are we have none. Thank you. That's what I want to hear. Let's go with the consent calendar. Items number 8 through 22. Would any member of the public like to pull in items 8 through 22? Seeing none, go ahead. And uh, I understand, uh, city manager, that we have a few items that uh, you'd like to make some brief comments on before yes. council members. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the council, during each of our individual pre-meetings, some questions came up here and there. I just wanted to run through those uh, publicly so everybody has an idea. Uh, we uh, A couple of questions came up on the check register in regards to what some lights were with respect to police vehicles. Uh, we answered that question. That, you know, there were just ghost lights, those smaller and conspicuous lights on police vehicles that nobody sees until they're right behind you in the rear mirror. Then there's the uh, uh, fuel monthly fuel charge in there. There was a charge in there for $3,700. That was for the November, December 2013. That was a reissuance of a prior check. On another item on the agenda, bridge inspections, which I think is item number um, 18. Uh, and the last uh, question was asked, when's the last time we actually inspected our bridges through town? In the last 10 to 12 years, the only time the town's actually inspected those bridges is when they're, it's post-event. 
earthquake or some other kind of seismic event. There are no records on file that provide data on recent bridge inspections, and that's why we're undergoing this new RFP. Uh, and then the background section within the RFP for that item will be cleaned up a bit to eliminate some of the uh, flowery language in there that, that might in some cases lead to an African markup, which we want to avoid. Uh, there's the Civic Center project receive and file. That's item number 17. It was noted that the council at the March meeting, when you accepted the master plan, provided some feedback that parking was a priority at the Civic Center and that the potential loss of 62 spaces was certainly a concern. Uh, the issue is discussed in the appendices and the potential for overflow parking being carved out of some green space near the library and between the new admin building and Fair Oaks is noted as possibilities, but the report itself doesn't specifically address or articulate the council's concern. Uh, staff can certainly have HMC add that in there as just an administrative change to that document. Uh, day use permits, just the clarification penalties are in addition to any uh, fee that you are required to pay. So if you're out there and you don't obtain a day use permit, you're going to pay the $100 penalty in addition to the $150 cost. <clears throat> the drainage contract amendment, there's a typo in the fiscal impact section of that. 49505 plus 13108 is 62613 not 52613 And that concludes my administrative comments on the consent agenda. Thank you. It is what it is. Beautiful. <laughs> thank, thank you, George. Uh, with that clarity, uh, any council members wanting to pull any item from the consent agenda? No. Yes. I'd like to pull 19. 19. 19 it is. Okay. Item number 19 has been pulled. We'll address that at the end. So, uh, can I get a motion to approve all the items with the exception of number 19, which has been pulled? Second. 8 through 22. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Perfect. Let's go ahead and move on. Take care of business here. Let's move on to the regular agenda item, item number 22, approval of budget amendment for the Civic Center. Uh, from 23. 23, excuse me, I apologize. I was looking at that. 23, the approval of the budget amendment for the Civic Center project <coughs> assessment and pre-design project management. <coughs> Mike Kaswaki, please. Uh, yes, Mayor of East, members of City Council. This item asks uh, for City Council approval to increase the Civic Center capital improvement budget to provide funding necessary to perform <coughs> environmental review and assessment studies required for project construction. Now that the master planning work is complete, preparation of the environmental document is the next logical step for its construction. The current Civic Center CIP has funding in the amount of $225,000, uh, $150,000 from the building fund and $75,000 from the library fund. Additional funds in the amount of $332,500 is necessary to fund consultant and staff costs associated with the preparation <coughs> and completion of the necessary environmental document. Approval of this amount will increase the Civic Center capital improvement budget to a total of $557,500. One of the byproducts of the master plan effort was the um, development of a cost estimate used to allocate project costs into three funding categories. The library fund, uh, the development uh, fund, and, um, and private funding. As outlined in your staff report, we now have an improved understanding of the estimated project costs, and the town um, will also will also be truing up the budget fund amounts using uh, the proportionate share information that was provided in the report, uh, which is the library funds or the library portion of the project uh, represents about 30, 31 percent of the funding. Um, the development service building uh, portion of the project represents about 10% of the total project funding, and the remainder of the Civic Center is, represents about 59% of the project funding. Accordingly, as identified in the staff report, uh, the library is proposed that the library funding be amended to, to be increased by $97,825 um, by adding a general fund allocation in the amount of $328,925 and repaying the building fund in the amount of $94,250 from the general fund allocation. That concludes that presentation. Thank you, Mike. Any uh, council members questions? Uh, 
Vice Mayor Bowie. Just clarification. So the 332,500 breaks down 310,000 for the EIR, is that correct? And 32,000 for staff time related to design and project management? Do I get 22, five for project management, 310 for environmental work, yes. Okay. So we're, we're, we're assuming the 310, we haven't come out with the RFP yet. Correct, it could come in significantly lower. They, that's the amount that was included within the uh, project cost estimate, but the actual cost is probably gonna be lower than that. And there's been discussion about hiring a project management consultant. Um, That's correct. The 22,500 though is just staff time. Correct. Yeah. That's not okay, so it's another budget request. Uh, okay, question. Uh, so if we approve this, in the course of the fundraising, if sufficient funds come in, could we decide to have the uh, Atherton Tomorrow Foundation or whatever it is that raises the money reimburse the general fund for the general fund portion? Yes, so long as the donors can agree to that. Yeah. Any other questions? Seeing that, any questions from the public related to this item? Number 23? I just please, please step up to the microphone. Yeah. After going to the ladies' room, I'm kind of in favor of it because I haven't seen a lock on a bathroom door like that, except for an outhouse um, with the thing. So I kind of looked around tonight and saw that, I mean, it's much better than an outhouse. I don't mean to be rude, but I, well, the lock, the whole thing. So it's actually, we do need something new. And there's no and mirror in there. I didn't in notice that. Yeah. I'm not that vain. I guess I washed my hands and I was out of there. We can find lots um, of reasons for this project. There's <laughs> yes. So I, I'm just saying yeah, the whole lock thing and the whole outhouse thing. I'm in favor of any funding you guys want to do. So Thank that's you. all I have to say. Thank you. Any other <laughs> any other comments? Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close comments. Now let's go to back to council. Any final concluding comments? I'd like to make a motion. Uh, I have some comments. Please. Okay, please. Uh, first off, I'm 100% in favor of fixing the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the lock. What Second, about the mirror? And, and if, there, if there's not a mirror there, then putting one in. Um, this building will not, is not included in this. Uh, <laughs> That's just right. to make you, That's make right. you aware. Um, I have a spare mirror. I'm 100% uh, in favor of moving forward with the EIR. I think that that's uh, it was the next logical step, and of course we've approved the master plan, and you know this is the next logical step, and I and I agree with with moving forward with that. Um, I have some concerns with taking money out of the general fund and and doing a backwards uh, adjustment. Um, to the tune of approximately $328,000, as we've discussed it. Earlier tonight, uh, there are a lot of things that are coming down the pike, and we're going through a budgetary process. And we don't know what all the needs are. We haven't even looked at the drainage master plan. We just looked at a $6.8 million uh, bicycle master plan. And, uh, you know, I know that some council members are hoping that we're going to get that thing fully implemented within three years, which that's going to take some substantial amount of money. Um, we approved moving <coughs> forward with the master plan, and we had an allocation that was set. Now staff has come up with an arbitrary, and I'm sure, it's, 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 I'm sure they use good logic, but an arbitrary allocation, not just on square footage, but you have to also consider the other items that are being associated with these things, such as some of the parking and things like that. So when I see the 10% allocation to the building fund, um, well, most of the people that come downtown during the day are going to the building department. It's contractors, people dropping off plans, getting plan checks, things like that. That's a happening place. So. Um, I believe that the 10% you know, was is semi-arbitrary. I think it could be argued. I'm not necessarily saying that we should change that for moving forward with the EIR. But, I'm, but I am against going backwards because we normally don't do, do that. And changing money and then taking money out of general funds to replace other funds and shift money around. We, we approved a, a, 
a budget item and it had an allocation to the individual funds and, and we approved it and we said that was the right thing to do and move forward. Um, and so I'm, I'm not in favor, I am in favor of moving forward, I am in favor of using these allocations because it's the best that we've got to move forward with the allocation moving forward onto the EIR, but I'm not in favor of readjusting backward funds that, for money in the projects that have already been spent and now been closed, um, especially when we have other demands on the general fund and we need to consider what we're going to go do in the coming months with regards to all the projects that we have on, on place. Not putting this one at any lower priority, I'm just saying don't go backwards. So that's, uh, from that standpoint, I can't support that portion of this, but I support everything else in regards to this measure. Thank you, Councilman Uh Vice Mayor DeBoy, any comments? Well, I, I think that this project overall is the most important project in front of the town. There, there are a lot of infrastructure issues that we're going to be looking at with these four master plans, notwithstanding the fact that a council member optimistically believed that we could implement or would like to implement the bike plan within three years, we will have to wait and that see. You. I know. The paper. <laughs> hey, that was you. Hey, that was an optimistic <laughs> statement. Uh, so it seems possible that without, can, can we go forward without going back to readdress the uh, building fund and ultimately take that money out in the future as well, we incur costs. The, the building fund is the town's fund and it yeah. can mm -hmm. clearly be used for the project to any scale and I, I can tell you given the size of the project it's going to be depleted Definitely. so it'll disappear either way so we're kind of moving our own money back and forth that we're going to use at the end of the project end game regardless. So it's yeah. so you don't have to do it at this point you can. I, yeah I, I don't think it's important because I whether we move it around or we don't move it around, we're going to spend the money. And we can spend it later. And it, I mean, we can have to spend it now, technically. We know we're going to spend it later if we move it back. So it doesn't from, really matter. From staff's perspective, allocation and matching the allocations is more of an auditing function going back saying, yeah, we true and properly allocated the funding based on the percentages of the use of the building. I get that. Councilwoman Lewis. So again, I'm going to reiterate, uh, moving forward on this town center uh, project is the highest priority that the town has in front of us, and the council cannot take its eye off the ball and uh, get into the weeds with this. I think what staff has proposed is a, a clear-cut way that we can move forward with this. I know that there are, as Council Member Widmer said, the bike master plan of 6.1 million, but what he didn't say was that the town's portion of that, the consultant indicated, would only be maybe about 1.2 million because of grants to fund other, the other portions of it. So, so it's not that we're looking at that and um, that entire amount. So I, I think that uh, we can, we, we could, uh, do bridge a uh, bridge loan from the building department fund, which is there sitting for uh, the building uh, department's portion of this project. Uh, the fundraising is uh, going to be uh, launched and is being launched Atherton tomorrow, and uh, you know until those funds start coming through. Um, but um, we uh, need to get the EIR going. So uh, I'm in favor of going ahead with what uh, the um, staff has proposed because I think it's clear to have an audit trail as it is. So, so do I have a question? I'd like to make a motion that we um, adopt the uh, attached resolution authorizing a budget amendment for the environmental and pre-design phase of the Civic Center project. It would be resolution uh, <coughs> Uh, amending the fiscal year 2013-2014 operating capital improvement program budget as uh, submitted by staff in our packet. And do we have a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion on that? Seeing none, okay. uh, call the vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Well, I, I agree with the resolution with items two and 
one uh, in the resolution, but as I said, I don't agree with part three, which is going into the general fund and moving it. We can always make that decision later. So we'll take that as a... Wait, wait, wait. So Sorry. unless you want to split the vote, that's a no. That's a no. It's your call. I mean, I don't care how you do it, but... Well, there's, 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 there's three. 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 Yeah. That's a three, but that, that is... Yeah. Right. I, I, I think of... So it's, that. it's three and two-thirds, but two-thirds doesn't going to show up on the register, so it's going to be three to one. Okay, that's fine. Just as a point of clarity, we get it. It's a no. Uh, three to one. Thank you. Let's move on to item number 24. Uh, authorize the mayor to transfer a uh, letter to Caltrans draft environmental impact report for the Peninsula Corridor Electrification Project. Uh, I'm Paul Jones. I'm uh, honored to be the chair of the rail committee. Uh, Lisa was not able to be here tonight, so I would like to present this briefly to you. I believe that you all received a copy of this letter prepared by staff with input from the rail committee. It was initially, the project was the Caltrain Modernization Program, which was supposed to improve train performance, increase ridership, service, and revenue, and reduce environmental impact. What we have in the environmental report that we're reviewing is, has as its object to provide an electrical infrastructure that is compatible with high-speed rail. This EIR does not conform with CEQA requirements in two very important respects. First, it's intimately tied to high-speed rail service, but it makes no environmental assessment of what that service impacts will be on the peninsula. So it's an incomplete report. At best, it's only a partial report. Secondly, it considers no non-electrical alternatives to serving the the peninsula. There are more attractive alternatives available. They were all dismissed simply because it was not electrical. So again, it's completely tied to the high-speed rail project. We have two attorneys, Gary Patton and Mike Brady, who believe that we have grounds for litigation to have this EIR set aside. I'm not here to comment about that. Also, I might add, I'm not here to ask for any money. No. <laughs> <laughs> so now we can relax. The EIR has a number of adverse in impacts for our town. The most important to all of us is the impact on our trees. There will be 140 true trees that they plan to remove, and there are 206 that could be severely pruned and the numbers could go up and down from that. We had a discussion earlier this evening that some of the redwood trees out here, if one of them has to go, they all have to go. So those are very much in jeopardy. Uh, it requires a 10-foot clearance from the nearest electrical wire, which is the source of all the pruning. And I'll get to that just in, uh, shortly. Uh, they contend that there will be a saving in greenhouse gas, but they're not considering the greenhouse gas emissions during construction, which it may well take many years to overcome in terms of the savings that they actually realize. They're proposing overhead structures with poles that are 30 to 50 feet high. <coughs> and when you and when you consider the spacing of the poles from the, the uh, current tracks and right-of-way, it effectively removes the trees that have been planted and nurtured along for many, many years to provide a screen from the railway. It will be exposed. The adjacent abutting property owners will look at that every single day, every train that goes by. They have uh, claimed noise reduction, which is, again, just minimal. The big noises that we all hear are horns and track noise. The diesel engine noise is something you hear on acceleration out of the station. It's relatively small. With modern diesel locomotives, it, it would be much less. So we're really comparing that against the uh, friction noise of the overhead uh, pantographs picked against the uh, contact wires and the overhead structure. And that may turn out to be rather small. It has not been measured or evaluated. 
They claim that there will be little traffic interference by increasing the number of trains that are running down the line. Their positive train control system will help, but that's independent of the kind of motive power that pulls the trains. That's a, that's a system thing. Uh, 